Good afternoon, I'm Catherine O'Brien. I'm Sylvana Junguito. I'm Liam Luke. And I'm Emily Morosi. This semester we did research on Rollins students' perceptions of the campus safety alert. First, for our problem statement, during active shooter events on campus, Rollins officials send out vague information to students that leave them afraid and confused and having them resort to social media to get their information. Our study proposes that they look into how officials improve this communication to the students. First, for our first literature review, could monitoring students on social media stop the next school shooting? This basically just looks at how external companies are being hired from, from high schools and college campuses to monitor their students 24-7 using an algorithm that they have created that looks into the keywords that these students are tweeting or posting on Facebook or something. <clears throat> Some problems arise with this method because it um, involves campus or the student pr privacy laws and also the students and the parents are not aware that they're being monitored. Next, preventing school shootings, the effectiveness of the safety measures. This examines three different school shootings that has happened, Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Virginia Tech. And the author focuses on the lack of empirical data that is being implemented um, in these security measures after a big um, school shooting has happened, and that is heavily covered in the media. It's more inspired by moral panic instead of actual empirical evidence. Reality on circulation, school shootings, ritualized communication, and the dark side of the sacred. This article dissects the use of social media by four school shooters, and um, they focus on the ritualized communication that these shooters have used prior to committing the act. And um, the media has the potential to influence what we call social imaginers. And when the media talks about these violent acts, it can be spread globally and nationally. Social media and active shooter events, a school crisis communication challenge. This study highlights the different patterns that are developing and how school officials are struggling to keep up with social media and to monitor them um, during active shooter events. And the, the patterns that were developed are um, lack of control, message content issues, and social media strategies. Lastly, school shooters understanding the high school, college, and adult perpetrators. This study introduces to us a direction of communication that can prevent school shootings from happening in the future and um, identifying at-risk individuals and helping them get help um, before it's too late. Um, this focus mainly studies or focuses on the perpetrators, but there is a section that um, deals directly with communication with the peers. So we developed two research questions to help guide us in our study. Research question one is how do Rollins College campus officials communicate active shooter information to students? And research question two is how do Rollins College students communicate about active shooter incidents, especially on social media? To answer our research questions, we conducted mixed methods research using both qualitative and quantitative research methods. The first method that we used was interviews. Interviews are classified as a type of qualitative research. Qualitative research was the best method because it helped us gather ideas, thoughts, opinions, and beliefs of those involved with communication of active shooter events. Qualitative research also explores the lived experience. It helped us to gain information and insight from those who were a part of the last active shooter lockdown on the Rollins campus. Interview research was the most appropriate method for this study. These interviews helped us to gather specific information from Rollins campus safety officials. The interviews also helped us to learn about campus safety communication operations in detail, specifically how they communicated with students and how they communicate with the Winter Park Police Department during an ongoing event. We used purposive sampling and conducted two interviews. The people that we interviewed were the Assistant Vice President of Public Safety and the Safety and Emergency Planner. Some things that we wanted to know from them were things like, what is the first step taken when campus safety is notified of an active shooter event or threat? And what challenges do campus officials face when students use social media to communicate about shooter events or threats? In analyzing our interview data, we carefully reviewed the interview recording several times. We uncovered themes and categories, and then we made connections between those themes and categories and finalized those themes and categories to guide us to our next method. 
Our second method used was surveys. Surveys are classified as a type of quantitative research. Quantitative research helped provide statistical information about our student population here at Rollins. This data helped us to provide support and help us draw general results from our research. Survey research was the best type of research to use because it helped us gain factual information about the habits of Rollins College students during active shooter events. And from this data, we gathered Rollins students' opinions of the alert system that we use here at the college. So we used a snowball sampling survey technique. Um, most students that responded to our survey were freshmen and sophomores. Hand in hand with that, the most frequent age range that responded to our survey was 18 to 20 years old. Some questions that we asked our students were, if there was one thing you could change or improve about the Rollins alert system, what would it be? And what is your preferred method of receiving alerts? In analyzing our survey data, we analyzed the details and compared and contrasted those with our interview data. We move on now to our findings and our results. First, we have our interview findings and we're answering our first research question, how do Rollins College campus officials communicate active shooter information to students? Um, after speaking with Assistant Vice President of Public Safety, Mr. Ken Miller, we came to the conclusion that they outsource their emergency communications to waive emergency communications. This allows them to have their emergency alerts at the push of a button. Um, this is extremely timely. They have prescriptive messages which allow for them to avoid victims and um, eliminate casualties. Uh, these, these messages are usually very broad and vague to the fact they just want to get it out initially and just to alert everybody there's an emergency. Um, this is usually because the investigation has not taken place as yet and they want to um, eliminate any uh, threat to their um, investigation. Ken Miller has also told us in the future there will be advancements in, in digital signage. This allows any department on campus to utilize signs around the campus from any place. Um, this is extremely helpful for the campus safety department because they can easily send this out immediately when they want to. Next we have our survey findings. We're still answering the question, how do Rollins College campus officials communicate active shooter information to students? Um, we joined our surveys, we found that students prefer receiving alerts as text over any other method and students also no longer prefer to use hashtags as their to, to find information. 86% of students do not wish to use hashtags anymore, and 94% of students prefer text over any other method. Next, we have uh, students feel that they receive um, an adequate amount of, of alerts when they are uh, during an emergency. Um, one of the problems we've encountered is that they that the detail in the messages and the content is not is not enough. However the amount of alerts they're receiving is enough. As I said, um, the, the, the messages are not descriptive enough. We, we have some sample answers from the surveys we've taken. Some of them are more, they, they would like to see more descriptive, um, make them less and only let us know if there are any important updates, add more alerts or be more specific. Be a, more, be a bit more clear, and maybe more details should be given. As you see, there's a general consensus that more details should be given about the importance of the messages. Next, we move on to our question two. Uh, how do all these college students communicate about active shooter incidents, especially on, serving, on social media? Um, here we're looking at our interview findings. Um, Ken Miller also told us that, there's a, that students should be held to a higher expectation when um, incidents happen around campus, they should be honest when sharing information. Um, the sharing of information can have dire consequences on the investigation and just um, the other lives of students, so the students should be honest and held to a higher account. Um, Kevin has also told us that campus safety received much feedback after the recent incident, uh, both from students and faculty. This is very important to, for them to have a, a, a complete and thorough investigation of their of their department and their system. Um, he also told us that campus safety is always evolving, always updating, upgrading their systems and their program in a whole. 
That's we have, as we as we pointed out earlier, that majority of the students that that um, uh, received our survey were sophomores so between the age of 18 to 20. It's important in our discussion and, and the way we can move forward. Um, students do look at social media when to, to communicate their, their emergencies, especially with feedback, and to gain, to gain information on ongoing situations and situations that happen, happened in the past. Um, students are not aware that campus safety uh, monitors social media posts linked to, linked to runs. I think this is a, a significant finding on our part for our survey finding. Um, and it's important that to be transparent throughout the community that this should be alerted and that campus safety should find a way to alert students that they are linked to runs um, through their social media. For our discussion section, the school officials do try to get the information out as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, they know it's vital to keep the campus up to date and they send out alerts every 10 to 15 minutes or so. The students do feel that they're receiving a good number of alerts, but they do feel that they could be more detailed um, so they don't have to send them out as frequently. Text is a preferred way of communication as you've heard and we believe this is because it's quick and readily available and if they need to go back and review the information, they can do so. <clears throat> The use of social media hashtags is de um, declining, so it's harder for so our school officials to uh, monitor these students. And this relates to one of our previous lead, um, literatures, social media and active shooter events, um, a school crisis communication challenge. <clears throat> also, the students didn't know they were being uh, monitored, which also relates to our other literature, which is could monitoring students on social media stop the next school shooting. <clears throat> and most of the students that res responded were 18 to 20 years old, which and sophomores, which um, means that they're old enough to be held or be held to that higher standard, and they're expected not to um, put out this um, inaccurate information and spread rumors that can um, disrupt the campus safety inter or investigation or um, their protocol. For research. We found that most students are subscribed to the alert system. Many students feel that campus safety should have more clarity in the reports. Students want changes made to the alert system. If more students send feedback to campus safety, changes might be made to this alert system, and the changes to their methods wouldn't, particular, wouldn't be particularly easy to make, but campus safety would definitely listen and consider those and social media hashtags are no longer popular with the college age students because hashtags were more of a trend in the past. Future directions. We encourage more students to reach out to the campus safety. Um, we're gonna show the survey results to head of campus safety officials and people should conduct focus groups with their own students to gain more specific insights so they get intel on what students are thinking. Our conclusion. After we got the data results from the survey, we strongly encourage the students to communicate with campus safety about concerns or engage in conversations